Hi guys, White Witch 110 here. This evening's episode in regards to historic haunts, others' experiences, is going to be about Mackenzie House in Toronto. Now Mackenzie House was the home of Toronto's first mayor, William Lyne Mackenzie, grandfather to William Lyne Mackenzie King. Now the home was built in 1850. Mackenzie lived in the house from 1859 to 1861 when he passed away in the second floor bedroom. His daughter, Isabel Grace King, also lived and died in the home. Since the 1960s, the house has been maintained as a museum and is regarded as one of Toronto's most haunted houses. But the museum born, board have maintained that it's not haunted. Now the caretakers to this museum, the first couple were a Mr. and Mrs. Edmonds, and they took care of the home from August 1956 till April 1960 and they left because of the disturbances. The next couple were a Mr. and Mrs. Dobin and they took care of the home from April 1960 until June 1960 but they lived off the premises. Now the first day that Mrs. Edmund was left alone, she heard someone walking up the stairs from the second floor to the top floor, and this occurred nearly every day. One night, she woke to see a woman leaning over her from the head of the bed. Now the bed was against the wall, so there was no space for anyone to be there. The woman's long hair was hanging down into her face. She felt a touch on her shoulder. The second experience that she had in regards to this woman, she was hit and she awoke with a black eye. On another occasion, she claimed to have seen Mackenzie one evening for only a few seconds before he disappeared. Now this woman, in the beginning weighed 130 pounds and by the time she was finished with all the experiences she was down to 90.5 pounds due to the stress put on her. There were also evenings when she would hear the piano playing and go to investigate and it would stop. Now her husband He had, they had grandchildren, and the grandchildren informed their grandfather that on the second floor bathroom that there was a woman that had been in there, and when they screamed, she had disappeared. There were also flowers kept on a window ledge, which was watered Sundays and Wednesdays, and on a Saturday morning, he arrived to find that they had already been watered. The saucer under the pots was full of water and mud was on the curtains. He also frequently heard heavy footsteps on the stairs. And there was a time when the entire house would shake like the printing press in the basement was being worked. Now Robert Edmonds was their son. His wife heard a clanking noise similar to the printing press and when reaching the landing of the basement it stopped. She and he had heard the piano play on four different occasions. Now Mrs. Dobbin, the following caretaker, Shortly after they were employed, they heard the footsteps on the stairs. 
There was an evening when she too woke up to the rambling noise thinking it was the furnace, but it wasn't on. The noise was the old printing press, but it was locked, and one or two other nights this happened. Now this was before they stayed off site. She had also heard the piano playing after going to bed, someone hitting one of the keys with a closed fist. Another off-site caretaker was Roger, I'm not sure how to say his last name, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> um, between 5 and 6 a.m., he had seen Mrs. McKenzie in a doorway. She seemed to lean on the corner. He blinked. She didn't move. His hair stood on end. He could not see through her, but when he moved, she disappeared. Now the house is a three-story Greek revival, and it is the only surviving home of the row houses built in 1858. And Mackenzie died of an epileptic seizure in 1861 in Toronto. The next one is the Museum of Nature here in Ottawa. And the collection in the museum began in 1856. There were many times the security guard felt an icy hand on his shoulders. A cleaner complained that when she plugged in the vacuum, and went around the corner, inevitably the vacuum would be unplugged. None of our other co-workers owned up to doing this. They would hear sounds throughout the hallways and the elevator would move when no one was on it. A female employee watched a man form in a mirror, then pass through her. She could not move until he had vanished. They believe the spirit could be David Ewart, the architect. The buildings were also used for Parliament after the fire in 1916. Prime Minister Sir Wilfrid Laurier's body laid in state within the museum in 1919. So they believe it could also be his spirit that haunts the museum, as well as others from the number of exhibits that they have. Those are two that I wanted to mention tonight. The other one, hmm. I guess we could do the University of Toronto there is a tower there called Soldier's Tower. In the 1930s, a workman fell to his death from the tower, and there have been reports of a light on in the window of the memorial room. Security guards feel uncomfortable and have heard a sneeze when no one's there. Now in September 1858, there was a murder on the university grounds. There were two stonemasons that were in love with the same woman. Her name was Susie. The stonemasons are Ivan and Paul. Now Ivan was in love with Susie and Susie was in love with Paul and she would secretly meet him on the grounds of the university. And the next one of the times, the next working day, Paul was holding a dagger. Ian grabbed at the dagger and charged the archway with an axe. The axe struck the door and embedded in it. Paul ran up the stairs to an upper landing. He weighed it with the dagger. 
Ivan came, Paul jumped out, and Ivan was killed. He placed the body beneath the tower steps, and it was believed that the body would never be found. In 1890, there was a fire at the university, and they believed that Ivan's skeletal remains were discovered. But they were then properly buried in the courtyard. Students have claimed to see him as solid as themselves and invited, them, invited him into the student quarters to sit by the fire and talk. The spirit has even told them the story of his death and then disappeared. Ivan is known to switch lights off and on. And also when reaccounting the story, lights can go off and on. Another student claims to have spoken to the spirit and that the spirit comes back for Halloween and Valentine's Day. And the description is of Ivan. So those are three haunted stories for this evening. I hope you enjoyed them. And I do have some more. And I'd like to say it is nice to spend the time with you telling you these stories. Today was a frustrating day for me, but it feels good to be able to come out here on my balcony on not too bad of an October evening and be able to tell you about these stories and relax. So I thank you for that. And I also thank those of my subscribers that leave their comments. That really does encourage me to continue. And I love that because I enjoy sharing with all of you. So again, I would like to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel and to those that leave their comments. I believe I do get back to you. I don't believe there's anyone that I've missed out who's left a comment on any of my videos. And if I have, I'm deeply sorry. And I will try and get to you. I'll go through and see if there is anyone that I have missed. It is, is that 9.35 in the evening, and we have, just a little over half a moon, with a bit of a haze, here, we haven't put any of our summer stuff away yet, and I'm, I'm out here in my pajamas with not even a coat on tonight. But apparently, there is a very cold, cold front coming in somewhere in Ontario with snow. I hope we're not going to get it here. I don't believe we are. I think it is going to stay up north. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't want the white stuff here yet. Anyways, thank you again for coming to, sh to see what I'm sharing or listen to what I'm sharing. Have a very relaxing rest of the evening, as I will. And have a fabulous Tuesday. Ciao for now.